Hi, my name is Tarun Jaitley and I am a sales engineer in the Bay Area Enterprise West team uh, at Snowflake. Uh, what we are going to do today is we are going to show how you could use the Snowflake platform to do end-to-end -end machine learning uh, within the Snowflake platform uh, right from having raw data to basically transforming the data and creating a feature store of the data. Uh, once we create the feature store, we can use the feature store to generate our training data set, uh, which could be then used to train models, log those models into Snowflake model registry, and then through a testing data set or an inference data set, uh, run that through the model that is registered in the model registry, and then generate predictions out of it. So what we are going to do is we are going to do this whole end-to-end -end life cycle within the Snowflake platform. And what this will help is basically help uh, data scientists and ML engineers to securely develop and productionalize their scalable features and models without moving any data or uh, doing any silos or having any governance trade-offs, right? So this is what we are going to do today. Uh, if you want to know more details about Snowflake Feature Store, uh, you can go to the documentation that is available in the Snowflake uh, documentation at docs.snowflake.com. And if you search for uh, Feature Store, you will be able to see everything that is related to the Snowflake Feature Store. So as part of this, what we are going to do is, right, we are uh, going to, I have, what I have done is, I have imported uh, a Python notebook uh, within uh, a notebook within the Snowflake uh, Python feature and as part of this what we are going to do is we are uh, going to use basically two packages the snowflake ml python package and the snowflake snowpark python power package as part of this uh, notebook so if i do a drop down of the packages here right i will see that these two packages as you can see have been also installed within this specific environment right uh, so the first step that what we are going to do is we are going to first uh, connect to Snowflake, right? Let's start running this uh, notebook. And here we are just going to create a new session for the Snowflake, right? In the, in the, so in this session, what we have is, this is the role that we are uh, using, the ML model role. Uh, the, this is the warehouse. And this is the schema uh, that is basically going to be used to create the feature store. Right. Uh, so what we are doing is here is where we are going to initialize the schema that uh, where the feature store is going to be created. And then we are going to choose one of the examples that we have for these feature stores. Right. So there are four examples that we have. Uh, we have the airline features, the city bike trip features, uh, New York taxi uh, demo and the wine quality features demo, right? So for our example, what we are going to do is, we are going to go ahead and use the wine quality features demo, right? So let me do that. Right, so this is the one that we're going to use and I'm going to run the cell. And then what this will do is, right? It will actually create the raw data. Uh, basically it creates a table called wine data in this, uh, in the database. And what this wine data has is it has the wine ID along with some of the features like fixed acidity, acidity, sugar, chlorides, etc. all these features. And then based on all these different features at the end, it is assigned a quality for, to that specific wine. Right. So this is the data set that we are going to use. This is a very commonly used data set in a lot of different machine learning demos uh, and models. Right. So what we are going to do is let's first create the feature store. Right. And uh, before we, uh, we, 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 as we create the feature store, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to look at uh, the different entities and feature views the, that are there uh, within the Snowflake platform, within, within the specific example, right? So 
uh, we are going to create the entities. So what is the entity? This is the wine entity. And then what we are also going to do is uh, we are going to actually register the features that are associated with that wine entity, right? And as this is being registered, right? These are the wine features and the extra wine features. So how are these being, uh, from where did we create this, right? If we go to this open source uh, Python code that we have available in the open source repo for the specific wine quality features, here we can look at what are the different entities that are being defined. So the, the entity that was defined is wine and the join key is the wine ID as well as uh, if we look at the different features, uh, there are two types of features. One is the managed uh, wine features. As you can see, these are the different managed wine features like wine ID, acidity, citric acid, etc. And also what we're doing is we are, uh, what we wanted to also show you is how you can do a transformation. So this is like a uh, new feature that we have added, a transformed feature, which is called hybrid acid, which is basically a, a product of the fixed acidity and the citric acid, the other two features that are already available, right, uh, in this. So, and then we create a fixed uh, a feature view, right? So the, this, this is basically the, um, uh, the, the, these are the managed features, but there are certain static wine features that are there like sulfates and alcohol, right? And we create a uh, separate feature view for that, right? So what we have done is, right, we have uh, basically taken that and what we have done is we have run these uh, cells to go ahead and create those views uh, in those uh, feature stores, right? And we are basically registering those entities and feature views uh, in the feature store, right? So now that we have done that, we can basically import those features stores here, right? And if I do that, these are the features that we had registered, fixed acidity, citric acid, chlorides, etc. as well as these are the ex extra wine features. So these are the wine features and these are the extra wine features. Now the good thing is, uh, not only we have created these features, we can basically look at these features in uh, in within Snowflake through Snowsight. So if we go into uh, our uh, Snowflake uh, UI, the Snowsight UI, and if I go into AIM and ML, and if I go into features, right, I can see that these are those features that got created. So as you can see, these are those features that got created. Underlying basically it's a dynamic table. So if I click on it, it will show you the definition of that uh, dynamic table that is being created in order to uh, basically uh, underlying dining table for, for that feature store. Uh, what I can also do is I can, the, the other good feature that I can see is, right, I can go ahead and I can look at the, uh, at the lineage. So if I go back uh, to my feature store, let me go back to the feature store here, right here. And if, and if I, you see here is lineage. If I look at the lineage, it actually shows you the lineage. So this is the lineage, basically the wine data table. And from this wine data, raw data table, we have created this uh, feature view, basically, right? So similarly, if I go back here, if I look at the extra wine features, those extra wine features also have been created in a similar way from the wine, raw wine data table, right? These are the extra wine uh, features, right? So now that we have created these, what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, generate my training data set from that specific, uh, uh, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to generate the uh, training data set. And now that I have generated my training data set, uh, I'm going to create a spine data frame that sampled from that source table, right? So let me do that. I'm going to create that spine, right? And as I run this, this is the uh, spine data frame. And then I'll generate a data set object from the spine data frame and the feature view. So this is my data set, which I'm going to use, which is my cool training data set. This is the name of the data set, which I'm going to use to basically go ahead and uh, use this data set, right? Uh, for actually training my model. And then I am going to convert the data set to a, a Snowpark data frame and examine all the features. So let me do that, right? So while it is doing this, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to train the model with Snowpark ML. So what we are doing is we are going to use a random forest regressor, 
uh, basically uh, modeling model from the Snowflake ML modeling uh, uh, library, right? And we are going to use that to build and train the model, right? So let me go ahead and run that. This takes some time. So while it is taking time, right? What we can also do is we can go and look at that specific uh, data set uh, that we had created and how we can look at the uh, model basically in terms of how that specific uh, data set got created. And as you can see, now you can see in the lineage, you can see that this is that wine data. These are those extra wine features, uh, right? And this is the training data set, the cool training data set, which has been created from that extra wine features, right? So if you see, right, you can see this complete lineage of how the raw data from the raw data, we are able to create features and then we are going to create, we are able to create those training data sets from those uh, specific features, right? Uh, similarly, we can do that for the wine features also. So if I go into this wine features and I look at the lineage, right? You can see that this is that training data set that has been created from that feature view, which has been created from the raw data table, right? So you can see the progression of how data has been transformed and basically a feature uh, store has been created and how you can extract uh, data sets from those feature store views, right? Also, these feature views are actually built on dynamic tables. So, uh, dynamic tables, you can set a refresh frequency on those dynamic tables, right? There are underlying dynamic tables. So where that based on that refresh frequency, the data is basically going to be continuously go ahead. Uh, as new raw data comes in, it basically continuously gets refreshed, the feature store from the, uh, from the uh, raw data sets, right? So now basically what we have done is we have trained the model. And then based on these model, right, we have uh, we have generated these feature columns, uh, right? Now that this model has been created, we will log that model into a model registry. Right? So let's do that. So this is a registry, basically, and then we we'll log the log this model into the model registry, right? So the other advantage is now once I have uh, created the model and logged into uh, uh, a model registry, we can actually look at uh, all the different uh, models that are created and logged into those model registries, right? And you can basically look at this information now through the Snow site also, right? So as this model registry model is being logged into the model registry, once it does that, we will be able to basically go ahead and look at that specific model in the, uh, so, so if I go in here, now into the Snowflake Snow site, if I go into models, I can see that this is the new model that was created, right? And as I look at this model, this is the version one of the model, right? And as you can see, once I look at this version, you can see all the different uh, explains and predicts in this, as well as when I look at the lineage, now as you can see, this model basically has been created from this training data set, you, you can remember, right? And if I further click this, I can see that how that specific training data set is created. So it is basically clicking being created from wine data, wine features, and the extra wine features. And uh, th that is where this uh, uh, training data set is created and how this training data set now flows into a model that has been registered in the model registry. So very cool feature of this lineage where you can actually look at uh, the source of the data for the different models that are being basically created uh, in snow site right for uh, for for uh, uh, basically inference purposes right so now if i go back in here i can mod uh, basically go ahead and predict with this specific model right so what we had done is we had trained their model through a, a, a training data set and now what we will do is we'll predict uh, based on a test data set right uh, for we'll take a test data set and we will run it through a, a predictive model right so the first option is basically we'll predict it with a local model so the model that we already have we are to go in, going to take that and we are going to basically run this training data set through that specific model and then predict the quality of the wine right so this is a uh, this is the quality of the wine based on the different input features for the training data set and also what we can do is we can since we have logged that model into a model registry, we can get that model back from the model registry and then run the uh, new training data set through that model registry and generate predictions, right? So that can also be done, right? 
So let me do that. I'm going to run that uh, new uh, testing data set through this model that has been extracted from the model registry and it gives me the predictions, right? So this is good because now what we have we have done is right once we register the model this model can be used by any other anyone else within your organization to basically uh, take it and run their own data sets through it and generate predictions from it right so in this demo what we were able to do is we were able to do an end to end machine learning uh, uh, within the snowflake platform without pulling any data out I, by using all the new features that Snowflake has launched, uh, like the feature uh, store, uh, the model registry, uh, and the Snowpark ML modeling uh, APIs, right? Everything using that without the need to pull the data out. We are able to run right from the raw data to transform data to feature store, uh, running it through models, and then basically uh, running uh, the inference data sets through the models that are registered through model registry and then generating predictions, right? To end-to-end -end machine learning we were able to do within the Snowflake platform. So I would highly uh, recommend all of you to please uh, look at the quick start guides that are available and basically use them to build your own models and using your own data sets and then generate predictions from those data sets for your specific machine learning use cases. Uh, I hope uh, this was an informative uh, demo for you. Uh, and uh, I hope that you uh, use these cool uh, Snowflake features to do end-to-end -end machine learning on the Snowflake platform. Uh, thank you so much.